On December 7, 2001, a news article on the BBC boasted, Lost City Found Beneath Cuban Waters. This exciting news came from a team of explorers headed by Pauline Zelitsky, a marine engineer, and her husband, Paul Weinswick. Their company worked side by side with the Cuban government to try to uncover hundreds of treasure-laden ships from the Spanish colonial era. But what they uncovered using their advanced sonar equipment was far more mysterious. Zelitsky estimated that it would have taken over 11,000 years for such a structure to have sunken to the depth at which these structures were said to be found. Strangely, after they released their findings, the news outlets and networks went dark. What might they have stumbled upon? When we talk about submerged cities, uh, we're lending credibility to the emerging evidence of cyclic civilization. The question is how far back do those civilizations go? First, they appear to occur in 5,000 year cycles. The historic context of civilizations going back 50, 60, 70,000 years along these 5,000 year cycles shows up in the mythology. Maybe the mythology uh, is based on much more fact than we've been led to believe in the past or we've been willing to embrace in the past. If this structure underneath the ocean floor sank possibly 11,000 years or more ago, could this be a link to the infamous Atlantis? Atlantis is almost a catch-all term for trying to find the origins of civilization itself. This probably goes back to the 19th century when the US congressman by the name of Ignatius Donnelly wrote a book that was to become the seminal work on Atlantis. It was entitled Atlantis, the Antediluvian World. And in here, what he proposed was that all of the civilizations of the ancient world and the new world, the Americas, had a mother civilization as its source. All of the information that's been left to us on Atlantis by Plato, the Greek uh, philosopher who wrote around 350 BC, suggests that we should be looking for Atlantis somewhere in the area of the Bahamas and the Caribbean. But because of Ignatius Donnelly's ideas to do with a mother civilization, Atlantis there be, therefore becomes this, this concept more than an actual drowned city. I believe that Atlantis existed. I believe that a high culture probably peopled those massive islands of, of the Bahamas and the Caribbean, and they may well have been drowned and destroyed in the great cataclysm, the so-called Younger Dryas event. And I think I need to explain the Younger Dryas. Let's first of all uh, consider the world during the Ice Age. Everybody's heard of the Ice Age. What was the Ice Age? Um, the, the last Ice Age set in about 125,000 years ago. And it saw the buildup of giant ice caps, primarily on top of North America, and on top of Northern Europe. Exactly why the Ice Age happened is still a subject that scientists argue about. Uh, but it's not in dispute that an ice cap two miles deep sat on top of North America and a huge area of Northern Europe, that same two mile de deep ice cap. It reaches its maximum extent about 21,000 years ago. The temperatures are, are warming almost actually to, to modern levels. Um, and, and the ice is beginning to disappear. And then suddenly, 12,800 years ago, really suddenly, literally overnight, everything changes. And the Earth is plunged back into a massive deep freeze. This is a time of, of a huge extinction of species are, are, are wiped out. The new evidence that is providing coherent sense to this is called the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis. And it has been 
uh, put forward uh, by a, a group, a large group of mainstream credentialed scientists. And what they've said is that they have found evidence which suggests the Earth was hit by several fragments of a comet. For a long time, the comet was out there. It was probably a very spectacular visual presence, uh, but it wasn't hitting the Earth. But 12,800 years ago, by which time that comet had begun to fragment and broken up into lots of fragments. And the estimates are that four of those fragments, four large fragments, hit the North American ice cap. It's literally beyond imagination. That instant of impact would have created so much heat um, that it would have melted large areas of the North American ice cap and sent the water flooding south. Then within a matter of, of days or weeks of that release of water, the freezing temperature has begun and there's no more release of water. The world, the world goes dry at that point and into a very deep, dark, frozen period accompanied by animal extinctions. The Younger Dryas lasts for 1,200 years. It lasts from 12,800 years ago to 11,600 years ago. And then something else really weird happens. The Earth's been in a deep freeze. Suddenly, 11,600 years ago, you get a second massive pulse of meltwater into the world ocean. One very strong suggestion is that um, the uh, Earth intersected again with the debris stream of the same comet, uh, and that there were further impacts 11,600 years ago. But those impacts were not on ice. Those impacts were entirely oceanic. You get big comet impacts in an ocean, and what you're going to get, as well as extraordinary tidal waves, what you're going to get is a massive amount of water vapor thrown up into the upper atmosphere. And that water vapor creates a greenhouse effect which causes, uh, accounts for the very radical warming of the Earth. It has to be rather intriguing that that's the exact date, 11,600 years ago, that Gobekli Tepe is founded. And it has to be even more intriguing that 11,600 years ago is the exact date that Plato gives us for the destruction and disappearance beneath the flood of the ocean of the lost civilization of Atlantis. If what Graham Hancock is telling us is true about the Younger Dryas, where can we see evidence elsewhere on the planet? As a matter of fact, just a couple of years ago, uh, a, a, a little further away from Malta in the Sicily Channel, uh, was discovered a, a, a giant, absolutely nobody's disputing man-made megalith lying on the bottom of the ocean and that bit of ocean was covered by the rising sea levels more than 9,000 years ago which makes it already three to four thousand years older than the established date for the monumental temples on the island of Malta itself. Some experts like Jack Carey have done some alternative research that might coincide with the science behind the Younger Dryas. Uh, as far as the sunken pyramids go um, in the oceans of the world, a lot of that uh, can be tied to uh, research being done by Dr. Courtney Brown and his group of, of very skilled remote viewers. And they're beginning to not only target what they described as, as being Atlantis, but through their remote viewings, they're beginning to ascertain that it was this very science that caused the downfall of the society, that they used it in such a way that it literally caused a destruction of the landmass, um, and that that may have actually been part of some sort of conflict or war that was going on. Um, the fact that there's just so many of them all around the world is, is what's fascinating. You know, humanity is not come together in any way, shape, or form the way we would want or hope or expect or love for it to do ever since uh, the Tower of Babel, ever since we were spread all over the earth. A conflict? What kind of conflict could Dr. Courtney Brown and his researchers be picking up on? Ancient texts from the Greek philosopher Plato explain in great detail the destruction of Atlantis by Zeus as payback for human arrogance. The legend describes the founder of the great city to be half-god and half-human and ruled by Poseidon. 
As punishment for their immoral bankruptcy, Zeus sent a ball of fire to destroy the aquatic cities. <laughs> 